In this video, I am going to show you how to find the inverse of a logarithmic function. Um, but first, I need to make sure you understand two more basic concepts that we are going to need. Um, the first one is just how to find the inverse in general. So before we get into logarithmic functions, imagine that I had the function, let's say, um, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Simple linear function. Um, now, this would be the same thing as y equals 2x plus 3. So um, to find the inverse function, you do two things. You switch x and y, and then you solve for y. I'm just going to repeat that. Switch x and y, solve for y. So first of all, uh, I switch x and y. So the x goes here, the y goes there. And then I'm solving for y. So if I would subtract the 3, so now I have x minus 3 is equal to 2y. And then I would divide by 2. OK, so now I have um, x minus 3 over 2 is equal to y. So there I have solved for y. Um, now I can put this back in function notation with the f of x. Um, but I need to put this little apostrophe in there. OK, and I'm going to rewrite it from left to right. So this would be the inverse of function f. And the little apostrophe shows that it's the, the inverse. So that's the first concept I had to remind you of, how you find the inverse in general. You switch x and y, solve for y. Now here's the second concept that we're going to need um, to deal with logarithms. You need to memorize how to switch back and forth between exponent form and log form. So for example, I'm just going to use a, b, and c. If I have a equals b to the c power, this is called exponent form. We have a base and a power. Now in logarithm form, obviously there will be a logarithm in it. Now focus on the base, the b. All right, the base is the key to everything. Um, so in logarithm form, you write your log, and then that base goes here. See how it's hanging low? It is a subscript. So log base b. Um, now, the a and the c are basically, basically going to switch places. So the c is going to come over here, and the a is going to come over here. So exponent form, log form. All right, you need to be able to go in the other direction, too. Um, let's see. Here's something in log form. Say if I have p is equal to log base q of n. All right, I should be able to rewrite this in exponent form. Now, again, focus on the base. The q is the base. So, and I'm going to keep this q on the same side, and I'm going to write it as a base. So um, in exponent form, you have a base, and, and it gets a power. Now what power? Now the p and the n switch sides. So the n is going to wind up over here, and the p is going to wind up over here, but now it's going to be the exponent. So this would be the exponent form. All right, now we're ready to find the inverse of logarithmic expressions. All right, we need to find the inverse of this function. Um, all right, this looks pretty uh, interesting. All right, here's a basic concept that I'm about to employ. Um, understand that, say if I had um, a plus b, and that was all over c, that would be the same thing as having a over c plus b over c. Uh, in other words, I could take this denominator and write it separately under each term. Um, so I'm about to use that right now. Because somehow I need to get these um, uh, x's together. I can't have two separate terms. I need to get them all together. So um, my strategy is going to be to take this um, negative 2 to the x power and the plus 1 and write them as two separate fractions each with a denominator of 2 to the x power. 
Okay, now, um, these are going to cancel each other out. Anything divided by itself is 1. So this is going to give me negative 1, all right? These cancel out and make 1. So I just have negative 1 plus 1 over 2 to the x power. So next thing I need to do, um, remember we're finding the inverse. So the two steps of finding the inverse are switch x and y and then solve for y. So it's time to switch x and y. So this will become x equals negative 1 plus 1 over 2y. Um, and now I just need to solve for y. Uh, the first thing I can do is move this 1 over by adding 1 to both sides. So now I have x plus 1 is equal to 1 over 2y. <clears throat> now this next step is going to be a little bit strange, uh, but see if you can follow it. Here's, here's the bottom line. Um, this is going to be the same thing as having 1 half to the y power. Now see if you can follow that. Um, remember, imagine that you had 1 half um, to, let's say, the third power. Wouldn't that be the same thing as 1 to the third power over 2 to the third power, right? Um, so, um, don't forget, 1 to the third power would just be 1. So I'd have 1 over 2 to the third power. Now look how similar this is to this, 1 over 2 to the y power. Okay, it's all very similar. So hopefully you can follow this backwards. Um, these are equivalent because this would be the same thing as having 1 to the y power over 2 to the y power. But then um, 1 to any power is still just going to be 1. Whoops. OK, so having um, 1 half to the y power is the same thing as having 1 over 2 to the y power. Now, if you can understand that, you still might be asking yourself, well, what was the point of doing that, um, bringing the y outside of parentheses? Well, that's going to make it a lot easier to get y by itself, because now all I have to do is rewrite this in exponent um, sorry, this is already exponent form. I need to rewrite this in log form. Now, anytime you rewrite in log form, you focus on the base. In log form, the base goes right here, hanging low as a subscript. And this would be read log base 1 half. So you know this is the base. Um, now, the y and the x plus 1 are going to switch sides. So I'm going to have y equals, and then over here, I will have my x plus 1. And that should be my final answer. All right, what a tricky problem. Um, so here the answer is C.